The OSI model, or the Open Systems Interconnection Model, is a conceptual framework used to describe the functions of a networking system. The OSI model characterizes computing functions into a universal set of rules and requirements in order to support interoperability between different products and the software. In the OSI reference model, the communications between a computer system are split into seven different abstraction layers. These layers include the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, the transport layer, the session layer, the presentation layer, and the application layer. The OSI model was created at a time when network computing was in its infancy. It was published in 1984 by the ISO, and though it does not always map directly to specific systems, the OSI model is still used to this day as means to describe network architecture. So the first layer we'll look at is the physical layer. The physical layer is the lowest layer of the OSI model, and it is concerned with electrically and optically transmitting raw and structured data bits across the network from the physical layer of the sending device to the physical layer of the receiving device. It can include specifications such as voltages, pin layout, cabling, and radio frequencies. At the physical layer, one might find physical resources such as network hubs, cabling, repeaters, network adapters, or modems. The second layer of the OSI model is the data link layer. At the data link layer, directly connected nodes are used to perform node-to-node -node data transfer where the data is packaged into frames. The data link layer also corrects errors that may have occurred at the physical layer. The data link layer encompasses two sub-layers on its own. The first, Media Access Control, also known as MAC Address, provides flow control and multiplexing for device transmissions over a network. The second, the Logical Link Control, also known as LOC, provides flow and air control over the physical medium as well as the Identifies Line protocols. The third layer of the OSI model is the Network Layer. The network layer is responsible for receiving frames from the data link layer and delivering them to their intended destinations based on the addresses contained inside the frame. The network layer finds the destination by using logical addresses such as IP addresses or internet protocol. At this layer, routers are crucial components used to quite literally route information from where it needs to go between networks. The fourth layer of the OSI model is the transport layer. The transport layer manages the delivery and error checking of data packets. It regulates the size, sequencing, and ultimately the transfer of data between systems and hosts. One of the most common examples of the transport layer is TCP, or the Transmission Control Protocol. The fifth layer of the OSI model is the session layer. The session layer controls the conversations between different computers. A session or connection between machines is set up and managed at layer 5. Session layers services also include authentication and reconnections. The sixth layer is the presentation layer. The presentation layer formats or translates data for the application layer based on syntax or semantics that the application accepts. Because of this, it is at times also called the syntax layer. This layer can also handle the encryption and decryption required by the application layer. The seventh layer is the application layer. At this layer, both the end user and the application layer interact directly with the software application. This layer sees network services provided to end user applications such as web browsers or Office 365. The application layer identifies communication partners, resource availability, and synchronizes communication. The TCP IP model is a popular network model created by DARPA in the 1970s. TCP IP is an informal name 
named after the first two protocols created. The formal name is the Internet Protocol Suite. The TCP IP model is simpler than the OSI model. While TCP and IP receive top billing, TCP IP is actually a suite of protocols including UDP and ICMP, among many others. The network access layer of the TCP IP model combines layer one and layer two of the OSI model. It describes layer one issues such as energy bits and the medium used to carry them, copper fire, wireless, etc. It also describes layer two issues like converting bits into protocol units such as ethernet frames, MAC addresses, and network interface cards. The internet layer of the TCP IP model aligns with layer three or the network layer of the OSI model. This is where IP addresses and routing live. When data is transmitted from a node to one LAN to a node on a different LAN, the internet layer is used. IP version 4, IP version 6, ICMP, and routing protocols, among others, are internet layer TCP IP protocols. The host-to-host -host transport layer, or more commonly called simply the transport layer, connects the internet layer to the application layer. It is where applications are addressed on a network via ports. TCP and UDP are the two transport layer protocols used in TCP IP. The TCP IP application layer combines the session, presentation, and application layers of the OSI model. Most of these protocols use a client-server architecture where a client connects to a listening server, such as SSHD. The clients and servers use either TCP or UDP, or sometimes both, as a transport layer protocol. TCP IP application layer protocols include Secure Shell, Telnet, FTP, and many others. A MAC address is the unique hardware address of an Ethernet NIC typically burned in at the factory. MAC addresses may be changed in software. Historically, MAC addresses were 48 bits long. The first 24 bits form the organizationally unique identifier, also known as the OUI, and the last 24 bits form a serial number, formerly called an extension identifier. The IEEE created the EUI64, also known as the extended unique identifier, for standard 64-bit MAC addresses. The OUI is still 24 bits, but the serial number is 40 bits. This allows for far more MAC addresses compared to the 48-bit addresses. IP version 6 auto configuration is compatible with both these types of MAC addresses. IPv4 is Internet Protocol version 4, commonly called just IP. It is a simple protocol designed to carry data across networks. It is so simple that it requires a helper protocol called ICMP. IP is connectionless and unreliable. It provides best effort delivery of packets. If connections or reliability are required, they must be provided by a higher level protocol carried by IP such as TCP. IP version 4 uses 32-bit source and destination addresses usually shown in dotted quad format such as 192.168.2.4. A 32-bit address field allows 2 to the 32nd or nearly 4.3 billion addresses. IP version 6 is the successor to IP version 4, featuring far larger address space, simpler routing, and simpler address assignment. A lack of IP version 4 addresses was the primary factor that led to the creation of IP version 6. Though most modern systems now are dual stack and use both IP version 4 and IP version 6 simultaneously. Hosts may also access IP version 6 networks via IP version 4. This is called tunneling.
TCP is a reliable layer four protocol. TCP uses a three-way handshake to create reliable connections across the network. TCP can reorder segments that arrive out of order and retransmit missing segments. TCP connects from a source port to a destination port, such as from source port 51178 to destination port 22. The TCP port field is 16 bits, allowing port numbers from 0 to 65,535. There are two types of ports, reserved and ephemeral. A reserved port is 1,023 or lower. Ephemeral ports are from 1,024 to 65,535. Most operating systems require super user privileges to be able to open a reserved port. Any user may open an unused ephemeral port. UDP is a simpler and faster cousin to TCP. UDP is commonly used for applications that are lossy or can handle some packet loss, such as streaming audio and video. It is also used for query response applications, such as DNS queries. Internet Control Message Protocol, or ICMP, is a helper protocol that assists Layer 3. ICMP is used to troubleshoot and report error conditions. Without ICMP to help, IP would fail when faced with routing loops, ports, hosts, or networks that are down. ICMP has no concept of ports as TCP and UDP do, but instead uses types and codes. A multitude of protocols exist at the TCP IP application layer, which combines the session, presentation, and application layers of the OSI model. Telnet provides terminal emulation over a network. Terminal means text-based VT100 style terminal access. Telnet servers listen on TCP port 23. Telnet was the standard way to access an interactive command shell over a network for over 20 years. Telnet is weak because it provides no confidentiality. All data transmitted during a Telnet session is plain text, including the username and password used to authenticate the system. FTP is the file transfer protocol used to transfer files to and from servers. Like Telnet, FTP has no confidentiality or integrity and should not be used to transfer sensitive data over insecure channels. FTP uses two ports. The control connection, where commands are sent, is TCP port 21. Active FTP uses a data connection, where data is transferred that originates from TCP port 20. Secure Shell, or SSH, was designed as a secure replacement for Telnet, FTP, and the Unix R commands. It provides confidentiality, integrity, and secure authentication, among other features. SSH includes SFTP and SCP for transferring files. SSH can also be used to securely tunnel other protocols, such as HTTP. SSH servers listen on TCP port 22 by default. SMTP is the simple mail transfer protocol, which is used to transfer email between servers. SMTP servers listen on TCP port 25. PLP version 3, also known as Post Office Protocol, and IMAP, also known as Internet Message Access Protocol, are used for client-server email access, which use TCP ports 110 and 143, respectively. DNS is the domain name system, a distributed global database that translates names to IP addresses and vice versa. DNS uses both TCP and UDP. Small responses use UDP port 53, while large responses, including zone transfers, use TCP port 53. Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP, transfers unencrypted web-based data. HTTPS, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, transfers encrypted web-based data via SSL TLS. HTTP uses TCP port 80, and HTTPS uses TCP port 443. HTML, or Hypertext Markup Language, is used to display web content. So next, let's look at common network devices. Network devices include firewalls, switches, routers, and gateways. Firewalls are essential tools in managing and controlling traffic. A firewall is a network device used to filter traffic. Switches repeat traffic only out of the port at which the destination is known to exist. Switches offer greatest efficiency for traffic delivery, create separate collision domains, and improve the overall throughput of data. They usually occur on the OSI model later, too. Routers are used to control traffic flow on networks and are often used to connect similar networks and traffic flow between the two. They can function using statically defined routing tables, or they can employ a dynamic routing system. 
they occur on layer three. A gateway connects networks that are used differently for network protocols. They're also known as protocol translators. Can be standalone hardware devices or a software device. Network gateways also work at layer three. Some other common network devices are repeaters, concentrators, amplifiers, bridges, hubs, and LAN extenders. Repeaters, concentrators, and amplifiers are used to strengthen the communication signal over a cable segment as well as connect network segments that use the same protocol. These all take place at layer one. Bridges are used to connect two networks, even networks of different topologies, cabling types, and speeds in order to connect network segments that use the same protocol. Bridges take place at layer two. Hubs were used to connect multiple systems and connect network segments that use the same protocol. A hub is a multi-port repeater. Hubs operate at OSI layer one. The LAN extenders are a remote access multi-layer switch used to connect distant networks over a WAN link. Network devices include LAN and WAN technologies, also known as local area network technologies and wide area network technologies. WAN connections and communication links can include private circuit technologies and packet switching technologies. Private circuit technologies use dedicated physical circuits. Private circuit technologies also use dedicated or lease lines, PPP or point-to-point -point protocol, SLIP or serial line internet protocol, ISDN or integrated services digital network, and DSL, which stands for digital subscriber line. Packet switching technologies use virtual circuits instead of dedicated physical circuits. This is more efficient and cost effective. Packet switching technologies include X.25 frame relay, asynchronous transfer mode, also known as ATM, synchronous data link control, also known as SDLC, and high level data link control, also known as HDLC.